out here. We're rolling. Hey amigos, welcome back to the Three Amigos Motorsports. If you're new here, you'll see all kinds of motorcycle content. A lot of Harleys, Victories, Yamahas, Hondas, just motorcycles in general. So please hit that subscribe button below. It really helps support the channel. Uh, for your return viewers today, I just finished up my 20K uh, fluid change. I just did a three hole oil change, primary transmission and oil. Um, and I'm installing a new product. I've had this on the bench for a couple weeks now. Uh, all you guys probably know the A1 Cycles uh, ventilator dipstick. It's supposed to solve a lot of problems with sumping and uh, the uh, oil blow by uh, in the air cleaner. It's something Harley had to do to get past the EPA so it recycles. Uh, you know, crankcase pressure and the oil back into the air cleaner, which is no bueno. Uh, it's a pretty nice product. Uh, see right here, it was $109.95 and uh, comes in the black anodized or silver to match your chrome bike. And it's pretty simple. It's, uh, you know, a one piece machined dipstick. Uh, and it's got a high temperature uh, hose that's already over on the bike, which we'll show you in a second, which fits on here. And pretty simply carries this breather uh, up over the rear cylinder near the throttle body and the idea is to just let some of that crankcase pressure vent um, so that it doesn't froth the oil up and create too much pressure. And trying to stop the uh, all the oil from blowing out inside your intake and leaking down the side of the bike. Yeah so here's this piece of hose I was talking about it's rated for like 700 degrees the instructions say no matter what it hits on your bike it's not going to melt or burn unless your bike's on fire. <laughs> but you got bigger issues then. Um, the only vagueness in the instructions is how much oil it says to run four and a half, or I'm sorry, four to five dots down, uh, after a hot cycle on the kickstand. So you're going to learn with us. We're going to figure out where that is. Uh, right now I got three and a half quarts in. I'm going to get the dipstick install installed and show you guys where that's at. And then we'll try to figure out exactly how much oil this thing wants. Uh, they recommend that you throw this in a Ziploc bag and just leave it in your saddlebag uh, if you want so you can have your you know your readings if you ever check your oil I have a bad habit of not checking my oil because I'm used to a victory where you just put it in every 5k and the same amount comes out hard lazy you know um, <laughs> so yeah it's kind of it's very simple I mean you would think it'd be more to it I thought you might have to lift the tank up but it seems like you can just get your hands up over there enough to secure it bike should be cool enough now it's a little toasty still, but yeah, you can see the hose right there. I've already burnt my hands on the oil filter, so why not do some more? So let's get this situated and we'll go to part two. So I got the hose half threaded here. Uh, just trying to figure this out a way I won't scratch the bottom of the tank. Uh, just putting a little hose clamp on here. And uh, I'll tell you guys now, we are headed out this weekend for a tour car. We're going up to Caribou, Maine. It should be about an 11 or 1200 mile weekend uh, in three days, a long weekend. So I am going to bring my OEM dipstick and an extra coat of oil just out of precaution. But we'll get some good initial review. And then my other plan is, it's, uh, I don't know, it's the middle of September now. I'm going to ride this thing like this for the rest of the season. We still have Tennessee coming up and another at least 5,000 miles of riding. Uh, and I'll post this video in the winter and give you guys the real mileage review so got this tightened up i think the hose clamp goes on this side because the dipstick side has a barb i don't know if i'm over tightening this or what good and tight german spec it's not going anywhere that's on there pretty good so now just find a sweet spot to get it up under there without scratching your tank And this is where the instructions get kind of vague, but... But it says in the instructions you want it on top, so it's away from wind and rain. So the wind can't hit it and create some kind of vacuum. Push and pull oil. Not a bad idea. I mean, this is the highest point of the motor, right? Yeah. We'll probably get it in this final resting spot. I'm going to get an idea how much oil we got in here now. centered off the kickstand let's see what we got 
we are at full hot vehicle upright or at the low end of that so he said four or five lines down on the jiffy stand so we're not doing anything right subscribe right now right. Yep. so i went three and a half quarts did one heat cycle uh took it up and down the street a time or two and just let it idle for a uh, good few minutes you know let it get into uh full heat cycle uh so say again four to five dots low on the dipstick on the side stand um at four dots low it ended up taking just over four i'd call that four and a quarter you can see what's left out of the uh fourth quart here probably about four ounces or so so not quite a quarter um grand can see in there with the light get the filter up in there it's just behind the rear cylinder not touching it so hopefully it doesn't scratch and uh the wire runs kind of nice in the top of the uh, rear cylinder head there and i ended up just running it behind you can see there behind my plug wire holds it and then just the pressure down onto the barbed uh, nipple itself holds it in place so you guys are actually going to see it fire for the first time hopefully it doesn't puke oil everywhere <laughs> uh, i thought you had to run it real low i was a little skeptical like you know running less oil but Harley for years said run four quarts of oil and then they just put the bigger filter on went to five so being four and a quarter in that happy medium i'm okay with that so we'll fire it up i'm curious to a lot of people claim our friend sean if you watched his video on his low rider uh s he's running the fueling version which is like three times the price um it just has some more machining and allows you to spin the dipstick out without uh, unplugging the hose but this was about 110 but he swears it revs up a little quicker and um you know when you let off the throttle it comes back down to idle quicker some guys are even claiming better gas mileage i probably won't get around to doing a few mileage tests never cared before oh you don't have the key oh yeah rookie moves let me grab my key hit <laughs> Garage is kind of a mess, doing three things at once. All right, here goes nothing. sound different. Just with an oil bit. Alright, I'm not gonna lie, initial thoughts are ready. That throttle felt snappier. I mean I know my bike I put 20k on it. That twist of the wrist felt snappier so if anything that's a plus. Uh, and I'm gonna hold on to this video for the rest of the season and then we'll put like I said on a 5k on the bike and get a good review of this product and uh, let you know good or bad. One way or the other. Gramps just keep talking. You know what to talk about? What do you want to talk about? Thank you for watching. Oh yeah, well it's not the end of the video. That comes at the end of the video. <laughs> Good picking. Thanks for watching. All right, guys. As promised, part two of this video, uh, about a 4,500 mile review of the A1 Cycles dipstick. If you watched the earlier part of the video, I installed this at the end of the 2022 season. Uh, I've since done about 4,500 miles. I will say a lot of that was highway. It was our main tour car trip, which is 1,200 miles, about probably 80% highway. And then down to the Dragon, which was another trip that was, what did we do, like 3,700 miles? Highway mostly. Yeah. For riding when we were there, obviously. Um, so as far as the, you know, the results of the dipstick, um, I know it's a right upon startup. You heard less compression noises. The throttle, certainly, it just feels snappier and it revs quicker and comes off a rev quicker, you know, back to idle. Just feels a little snappier. I know some guys claim better fuel mileage, but I've never tracked that, so no, uh, no comment there. So it's a little dusty here from storage, but that's, it's hard to say with the dust, but you can see. It up. There's barely any oil uh, blow by now, so before that, that clear cover for me would get 
just misted with oil after even a few hundred miles. So that's since my last oil changes was the last time I cleaned this cover. So I am using that cover as a gauge and definitely less blow by. Uh, fit and finish on things fine. I mean, it's real simple. I know the fueling does a better job of, I think it allows you to unscrew the, the dip stick with the hose still attached and some more machine parts, or they have one with the filter built in the top and doesn't have this breather hose. Uh, but three times the price, this thing does a job for $100. Again, it just comes off here and you unscrew it like normal. My one complaint is there's only the one line on the dipstick, you know, where your Harley gives you hot or it gives you full hot, full cold, jiffy stand, side stand. It'd be nice if it at least gave you the range so you know where you were low. Um, they literally recommend... You can see the little line. Yeah, they just got the one line there. They literally recommend keeping the stock dipstick in your saddlebag, which I do. Um, so I gotta learn to trust this thing. That being said, per the instructions, it said to run four to five dots down from full on the jiffy stand, which I did. That ended up being about four and a quarter quarts, which is three quarters of a quart low from, you know, a spec of five quarts. Um, I think it was like 2018, Harley brought the bulletin where these machines went from, was it four and a half or four quarts? Four. Four quarts of five, so you do get some extra oil in there. I think it's mostly in the capacity oil filter. But I think that is so that you weren't running low between services. That being said, I got a low oil light on one of my last rides and it took half a quart, almost three quarters to get back to that level. Um, so it still makes you wonder where it's going in the Harley. Is it burning it, using it? But it's not seen me getting the blow by base on the cover. Um, kind of fault of my own. I should be checking my oil more often. I have bad habits from the victory where I put four and a half quarts in and that's what comes out and I don't check it except for 5,000 miles. Haven't pulled it out ever. Uh, and I don't worry about it. So I guess my consensus is I gotta be better about checking my oil. So I'm gonna keep running it because I definitely like the, you know, the snappier throttle feel and it's, I think it's a good thing that you're not getting that evaporative oil that's going back through the heads and trying to burn off. So it definitely functions there. Not sure how I feel about the uh, running less oil. So do with that information if you will. Make sure you check your oil would be my advice. Check your oil often and make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. I forgot what to say.